Ah, Major League Baseball's opening day, where hope springs eternal with endless possibilities in store for promising teams and players from sea to shining sea. The first step in an ungodly marathon of homers, unwritten rules, and hammy pulls. This is the game to get fans excited for the 500 plus hours of baseball to come over the ensuing six months. But one day, we got an opening day game so lopsided and boring, the thought of another 161 after that was more unbearable than a cross-country road trip with Screech. This is the worst MLB opening day game. April 4th, the year of our Lord, 2016, Petco Park, San Diego, California. Padres hosting the Dodgers in the very first game each skipper has managed with his ball club. This is also the 67th and final opening day for Vince Scully, the legendary Dodger broadcaster who speaks like Michelangelo paints. He's 88 years young and has quite literally dedicated his entire life to the sport, so the least the baseball gods can do is give him a half-decent ball game for his last ever opener. Tyson Ross gets the ball for Andy Green's Padres, and from the very first at-bat, things go sideways when their new center fielder John Jay dives for a ball hit by Chase Utley that should have been a single, but that instead enables the geriatric Utley to leg out a double. Another couple of hits gives the Dodgers a quick 2-0 lead. Not ideal, but under ordinary circumstances, not some death sentence either. However, these are not ordinary circumstances because they're not facing an ordinary pitcher. They're facing Clay Kershaw, a man genetically engineered to pitch a baseball like a great white shark is engineered to eat. Across the thousand innings he pitched leading into this game, a stretch spanning four and a half years, the first digit of his ERA is a goddamn one. And in that time, he became the only pitcher to ever lead the bigs in ERA for four straight seasons. And it's his sixth consecutive opening day start where he's been even more untouchable. Padres fans have to hope after years of seeing their bats go quieter than Mr. Bean on Tylenol PM, this lineup can come from behind against the opposing cyborg on the mound. The best way to highlight the difference between the two starting pitchers is with graphics Fox made for each. Here is Kershaw's, three nice things. Here is Ross's, one of the things is a motivational phrase. But this DM was not carpeed. After Kershaw made quick work of the Padres in his first two innings, the Dodgers tack on a third run with this Adrian Gonzalez RBI single. The Padres then manage to actually get a hit in the third when John Jay slaps this 3-2 fastball to shallow left. Finally, the pods have something cooking, which lasts for all of one pitch. The next couple innings were just a bunch of nothingness with no one reaching base in either the fourth or fifth inning. So we're moving right along with the hope that this game can either somehow become competitive or at least end quickly so everyone can just get the hell home. In the top of the 6th, the Dodgers get a couple guys on, first with Yasiel Puig getting beamed in the arm, before Carl Crawford reaches with everyone's favorite type of hit, the kind that doesn't leave the infield. Jock Peterson then piles on with an RBI double, which causes the Padres to bring their infield in for number 8 hitter AJ Ellis, who hits a chopper that's just beyond the grasp of Alexei Ramirez. Two more runs score, in the process sucking away any remaining morsel of Ross's competitive spirit because on the very next pitch, he allows the pitcher to smack a base hit into center field. And that would be his final pitch of the 2016 season as this game damaged not just his pride, but also his shoulder. Utley then steps to the dish against Ryan Buchter and drills a slider into right field where former Dodger All-Star Matt Kemp flubs the routine play, enabling AJ Ellis, a man who would be slow for his job even if he were an accountant instead of a pro athlete, to score from second. This Corey Seager sack fly drives in their fifth run of the inning, giving the Dodgers eight runs in the game, roughly nine more than Kershaw generally needs against a team like this. In the seventh, with the game long decided and Luis Perdomo, now the Padres' pinata on the mound, Trace Thompson hits an RBI double before eventually Grandpa Utley drives home another couple, 11-0. Kershaw breezes through the home half of the inning, retiring his 13th consecutive Padre before the Dodgers mercifully lift him. The game moves to the eighth and the massacre just will not end. Gonzalez's third RBI single puts LA up a dozen, 
A wild pitch moves him to second, though doesn't really matter because Yasiel Puig clobbers this 2-2 breaking ball to deep right center for a triple before this shitty Corey Spangenberg throw turns it into a de facto inside the park homer. And Puig's gonna come home, Perdomo does not have a play. LA tacks on one more just to be safe because the 15th is the really key insurance run and wraps up their third consecutive inning, sending at least eight batters to the plate, when even before all that, the Padres' chances were next to nil. Poor Vinny's loved baseball more than anyone loves anything, and it took close to 70 years, but this game's bad enough to leave him regretting everything. I think they played a ninth inning, but who the hell knows. The 15-zip final score is the most lopsided opener in the live ball era, and in case you hadn't noticed, no one even mashed any dingers to give a relentlessly monotonous game a temporary splash of excitement. Just a slow, constant, miserable death by paper cut. There were some other strong candidates, including the Phillies Mets opener in 1998 where the game's only run came in the 14th inning after a near five hour wait, or the White Sox kicking off their 1940 season by failing to get a single hit in their own backyard. In 1965, what could have been a fun ending between the Cubs and Cardinals ended in a dang 10-10 tie because it got dark and Wrigley Field did not have lights. Hell, Kershaw and the Dodgers also blasted these Padres in their opener the very next year in 2017. But a game that lacked any drama from the start before spiraling historically out of control that even in a demolition couldn't provide the excitement of a single long ball, with tons of sloppiness in the final opening day ever called by the greatest broadcaster in the history of sports, just makes me sad. Try something else, San Diego. Jeepers, that game sucked. I thought it would never end. Anyway, hope you liked it, and if so, I bet you like these videos too. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, brush and floss.